Welcome to the world of YouTube. Welcome to the Olympics, Beijing 2022. My name is Victor Halthorup. I am a two-time Olympian speed skater from Denmark. And I'm so fortunate that I managed to qualify for the Olympics. And very few people do get to try that out, do get to have that experience. And that's why I decided to share all the emotions, the entire trip with all of you guys. This is gonna be the first episode, which I'll just start from, the, from one end to the other how we traveled to Beijing. It was quite different than how you would usually fly to a foreign country because um, it's COVID times and of course, because it's the Olympic games. Uh, it's quite wild. Having so many athletes here in this huge bubble is just very extraordinary. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about how the Olympic village functions. I'm gonna talk about how I train. I'm gonna talk about the social life, how we interact with the other athletes and uh, just everything you would experience at the Olympic games. I might come up with some new ideas as we go along. And if any of you people out there have um, thoughts or questions or ideas to what my next vlog episode should be about, let me know and I'll try and work that into uh, the schedule. There's a lot of time that I just sit around here because uh, we do only train twice at the most three times per day. And the rest of the time we're just recovering, um, chilling. So I'm gonna spend most of that time editing some videos and, um, and giving you all a glimpse of the Olympic, um, the Olympic journey. I'm gonna show you how we traveled to Beijing. It was different than I expected. It was different than my last Olympics in Pyeongchang. This time, because of COVID and to take no risk, there's a lot of um, fellow athletes, thankfully not from the Danish delegation, but from other countries and that have tested positive. So just to be on the safe side, we did everything we could to, to stay away from uh, the rest of the world, basically. Personally, I've been training in a bubble for more than a month already and been in a bubble most of this entire winter, this entire season. So, um, so it wasn't a new thing in that way, but it was uh, extraordinary in the way that we had an entire private hangar uh, at our disposal when traveling to Beijing. We had a private flight and uh, that was quite cool. They did everything to make us feel comfortable in the overlight, uh, overhead cabins. They had turned on like lights, so it matched the Danish colors, white and, um, white and red, that was pretty cool. And uh, flew business class, so really can't complain about that. That helps adapt to the uh, Chinese time zone. And um, it was a smooth flight. Once we got here, we did wait uh, several hours at the airport uh, due to customs and just the whole show of managing so many people flying with a ton of luggage and getting us to the Olympic Village safely. So that took a while. Uh, as you can see, the Chinese people are really careful when it comes to uh, how they're dressed, the equipment, um, which is funny, but it also gives you a feeling of safety. So I kind of like that. And uh, then we got to the village. We had to be quarantined for about four hours, just sitting in the room, um, waiting for our uh, negative results from the PCR test and uh, after that free to go and explore this pretty cool village. I'm um, gonna just show you here some clips of the um, it's kind of it is a hotel style um, life here but it is actually apartments um, which is cool. Beijing designed them to be used after the Olympics and not just for this one one-time event here. And obviously it plays a big role here. They call it um, together for shared future is the motto of these Olympics. Once you're inside the Olympic village, you can just walk around freely. You gotta wear a mask, but you can, um, you can interact with, with other countries, other delegations. For me personally, that's, that's very important. Uh, my fiance is Russian and uh, she's also here representing Russia in, uh, in short track speed skating. So I'm pretty fortunate to be able to really just hang out with her as if we were on a, on a nice couple's vacation kind of together. So uh, that's a big plus for me. Mentally, that's, that's a game changer. Uh, I'm so much more calm when we're together. It takes a lot of pressure away. But the Olympic Village is super cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a tour of the Olympic Village and, uh, and show you a little bit what there is here. Today, I'm inside the food court at the Olympics where you can get almost any food you can imagine. It's uh, super empty today because all the other athletes, or at least most of them, are busy doing the opening ceremony. So I decided to make this video where I'll give you a little bit of insights in all the stuff we can choose out here. And there's a bunch of friendly Chinese people, fresh made food. And trust me, you can get anything. You can get pasta, you can get Chinese uh, traditional food, you can get bread, cereals, cake as well, pizza, 
It's open 24 seven. So it's super convenient. And uh, there's all the coffee, there's, the games are sponsored by Coca-Cola. So we've got all the beverages we, uh, we could imagine. And uh, it's just awesome being here and it makes it easy for all the athletes that follow strict diets. We sit in these tiny cabins where we're uh, kind of <laughs> excluded a bit from each other, of course, for safety reasons. Um, that's a little weird still. I haven't gotten used to that. It's a little awkward. There is all sorts of food, really, um, from all the different cuisines across the world. And uh, if you want more than that, there is a, uh, it's a mall inside this village. Uh, the village is completely closed to the public, obviously. And um, they did everything they could to make it feel like an actual village, an actual world for us to live in for almost a month. And um, in the supermarket, you can find souvenir stores. There's a Pizza Hut, there's a KFC, there's a bank. Just things to do, things to keep you occupied because we do not compete that much. And we also, like I said, we can't train all day long. So um, most of it is just um, du pastel, like spending time here. And, um, and it's nice that they made an effort to uh, to make that easier. There's also a big gym here inside the village so we don't have to go to our um, venues just for, for simple training, conditioning, strength training. Super convenient. Uh, obviously they have the equipment on point and uh, that's nice. And then at the skating rink, there's also gonna be a gym uh, and equipment for warm up. Olympic Village is huge. There's thousands of people, not just athletes, but staff and all the volunteers. There was more than, more than 1 million people applying uh, to become a volunteer here at the at the game. So they really managed to like handpick the best of the best. So they're all fluent in English. That's a big plus, makes it comfortable and convenient in many ways. And that's about it. Let me know in the comments what you wanna hear about, what you wanna see, and I'll, I'll show you in the next episode. It's cool having you all and uh, thanks for supporting me, all the athletes here at the Olympics. I mean, this is what we train for every day. And in the end, it all comes down to you guys, the audience, appreciating that, and uh, and that's what we fight for. So thanks for that.